Hey, hey, y'all. So, real quick, I'm going to give y'all a sneak preview of what we're going to be teaching at the live lecture. This is not a workshop. This is a lecture teaching 21 steps, uh, what I call the magic formula. This will get you jump started. It'll save you a bunch of time. For starters, um, I like to start at the end. There's four levels, okay? CD stands for company driver. Uh, you want to get three to six months experience. That way you learn how to drive the truck so you don't go and buy your own truck and tear it up. There's certain mistakes that you can only learn through making mistakes. And you want those mistakes to be on somebody else's dime. A bigger company, Fortune 500 company, can absorb those mistakes more than you can. Then you got owner-operator. You want to do the owner-operator no longer than a year. So you can save 15000 If you save 300 a year, excuse me, 300 a week, you'll save roughly 15000 a year. That will get you to the next level. When I started, you only needed $10,000 to get started. Now, truck prices are up. Uh, materials cost more. Your startup costs more. 15000 to get you ready to get into the next level of the game, which would be your own operating authority. Once you get your truck and your trailer and you activate your insurance, you activate your operating authority is now active. Once you get rolling, save up $10,000 for a repair fund. $10,000 will get you out of most jams mechanically if you purchase your truck right because your major components such as your engine, transmission, your res, and your DEF, which I hope you don't have on your truck, but if you do, uh, and you finance the truck, you should have those things covered by the warranty. Once you have gotten your CDL, drove as a company driver, save, excuse me, learned how to drive over a three to six month period, became an owner operator, saved $15,000, then activated your authority and saved $10,000 for a repair fund, then and only then do you upgrade your life. There's a lot of individuals who have been knocked out of the game. Why? Because they start off, they get a couple of settlements, they start thinking they're rich, they upgrade their life according to those settlements. And then when tough times come, they up shit creep. I'm telling you from personal experience, I got my first truck when I was around 27. Couldn't tell me nothing. And I've watched this happen over and over again with different individuals. So I started off with the end as a... Very, very good book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of the principles in there is beginning with the end in mind. So this is what you're working toward. Getting your, uh, becoming a company driver, upgrading to an owner operator, transferring to having your own authority so you can then upgrade your life. That's a four phases. Starting from ground zero. One thing you need to understand, just like there's three different ways to truck, local, regional, or long haul, there's three levels in trucking. This is a four phases you're going to go through in your trucking career. But there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's three levels in trucking. Company driver, owner operator, owner authority. A company driver has no vested interest in the company, the truck, all he does is go to work, drives, and gets paid. An owner-operator, however, owns the truck and is responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of the truck, but they do not own the company, and most times not the trailer. Uh, they're giving work from the company. They're leased on probably at a 70-30 or 75-25 split uh, with the company. They own the truck, not the company. They're dispatched by the company and receive a settlement at the end of the week. Then you have authority. When you get your own authority, you own the truck, you own the trailer, you insure the freight, you book your own loads, and you pay yourself. Um, so let's get into these 21 steps. You wanna start off with a CDL. I don't recommend anybody to get a truck without owning a CDL. There's several reasons why. One of the main ones is that there's a shortage of drivers in the United States. You can rush out, buy a bunch of trucks if you want to. Then you're going to have trucks sitting on your lot because you can't find drivers. Um, 
Also, there are times where drivers abandon trucks, people steal trucks, people park trucks in places that they don't belong. And sometimes you may have to take or pick up a truck from the mechanic. So it's good to have a CDL even if you don't plan on driving. If you own the truck, you should have a CDL according to my experience and my philosophy. Your next step is your legal structure. You're going to want to set up a INC or LLC or partnership. We're going to go deeper in detail to that. I'm going to create a, a separate video for each one of these steps. This is just a brief overview. Once you got your CDL, you set up your legal structure, you're going to want to get an EIN. This is your business social security number. This will allow you to open a business bank account. Then you want to apply for your operating authority. Your operating authority is going to cost you about $300. You can have operating authority without owning equipment. It's just not active. But you will have your MC and your DOT number set up. You want to get your operating authority after you set up your legal structure because you don't want to file for operating authority, then go back and try to do your legal structure and find out that your name has been taken and now all your documents are mismatched. Once you get your operating authority, they're going to give you your MC or your DOT number, which you can use to get on the load board. I recommend everybody get on the load board before buying a truck and the trailer. I did this. I used to sit in my living room and book imaginary loads and look on the load board to see what's out there. Why is it important to get on the load board before you get a truck and a trailer? Because a paid subscription to a load board is the only way that you're going to see the true numbers in today's market in real time so you can do real market research. Those free uh, load boards or the mock load board is not going to uh, give you real numbers. It's going to show you what the board is like or it's going to show you some old loads or some pretend loads. But the only way that you're going to get real market research with real numbers in real time, today's time, is to have a paid subscription to a load board. Once you uh, do all that, you want to find a truck and a trailer. You don't have to buy it now. And the insurance companies are going to get mad at me for saying this. But find a truck and a trailer that you like that fits within your budget. Get the year, make, model, VIN, and mileage. Why do you want to do this? So you can get prepared for the next step. Insurance. You want to get an insurance quote with the information from this truck and this trailer so you can know whether or not you can afford to activate your authority. Filing for your authority is one thing. Having active authority only takes place once you get your insurance. Okay, uh, you're going to need to insure your equipment once you know that you can afford it and you've applied for it or even paid cash for it. Your insurance is normally going to run you about three to $5,000 for a down payment. Your monthly payments will vary. That all depends on your driving record, uh, your personal history, your credit, and a number of different factors. But you should be prepared to put down three to $5,000 for your insurance down payment. After you've purchased your truck and trailer and insured it, you're going to need a vehicle state inspection. Not a DOT inspection, but a state inspection. Why do you need a state inspection? Um, because even if you purchase a truck and it's sold DOT inspected, your specific state will not recognize that. You have to get an inspection from your state unless you purchased a brand new vehicle with zero miles straight off the manufacturer's floor. Uh, not a one-year or two-year-old truck, which is still considered new in the trucking industry because trucks get a million miles easy. But we're talking about a brand new one that no one has never owned. That will exempt you, from my knowledge, from uh, a state inspection. Any other vehicle, when you get it home, unless it was sold and inspected and you bought it in your state. But most people don't buy trucks from their own home state. I have probably purchased two trucks in my home state in my whole entire career. And I've been through 19, 20 trucks. Um, 
Once you purchase your truck and trailer, activated your insurance, got your state inspection, you will be able to get your tags. Uh, your tags are called a portions place. You're going to have to set up an IRP account. I'll get more into this when I do an individual video for each step. Once you uh, create an IRP account, you're going to have to pay your $2290, which is a heavy highway use tax. That's going to cost about $550. Then you can go back and complete your portion plates uh, and get your hard tags. Your tags are going to cost you about $1,800. Somewhere, I would always say uh, $2,000, but it's going to be somewhere between $1,800 and $2,000. $2,000 would be a safe bet. You don't have to pay cash. You can pay for credit cards. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's also going to depend on how many states you put on there. It could vary. I recommend putting all states on also just a side note when you get filed for your operating authority you do not have to have an mc and a dot number your mc allows you to cross state lines your dot number allows you to operate within state lines if you just get a dot number your insurance will be much much cheaper and so will your apportion plates uh excuse me you won't even need a portion plates you'll just have regular tags so you can operate within your state then you'll want to uh, create an IFTA account, which is an international fuel tax account. Uh, this is the sticker that you put on the side of your truck. This is uh, where you pay your taxes for every gallon of fuel you've purchased and every mile that you've driven in each state. Every state outside of your own state that you purchase fuel in or drive miles, you have to pay taxes for both. If you drove all of your miles in your home state and you purchased all of your fuel in your home state then your taxes were already paid at the pump in the form of sales taxes so when you file your quarterly ifta you only have to pay the filing fee which is about 50 dollars in maryland then you're going to want to get a factoring company factoring companies take the bite out of you getting paid most brokers pay net 30 which is a 30-day term Meaning if you get uh, door load and delivery today, you will get paid 30 days after. If you sign up with the factoring company, they will pay you the next day if your paperwork is in, in time. Not only that, a lot of factoring companies have fuel cards, which I'll get into next. A lot of them also have equipment financing, repair financing, and maintenance cards. Uh, as well as uh, tire savings and more, depending on which factoring company you use. And some factoring companies, like the one that I use, will pay you within an hour of delivering and submitting your paperwork. Fuel cards. You want to get fuel cards. I suggest getting as many fuel cards as possible. Every single truck stop has fuel cards, and a lot of gas stations have fuel cards. I did a video on this before. Uh, diesel at truck stops are, is high. They're, they're charging you for convenience. You can go to a gas station that is literally next door or across the street and pay upwards to 50 cents less. And trucks normally have around 100 gallon tanks, one on each side, which that's 200 gallons. Uh, if you're saving 50 cents on a fill up, you're saving roughly $50 per tank, which will equal about $100. If you multiply that by 30 days, that's $300, uh, excuse me, $3,000 savings a month. And that's a significant saving for you not filling up at a truck stop, going next door. It may take you an extra 10 minutes to move the truck to the other tank, but it's well worth it to save $3,000 a month. Uh, most people's mortgage is not $3,000 a month. Um, that type of savings for an extra 10 minutes a day can pay for your mortgage, your car note, and your insurance. So I would think twice about that. Also, having fuel cars would take the startup bite out of your pockets. A lot of times people get in their first truck, um, they putting all the money they got up to get it. I certainly did when I got my first truck. I actually ran out of gas on my way to work on my first day. And somebody uh, was looking out a window 
and came and saved me and I made it to work, got a field card from the company I was leased on to and the rest of the story is history. <laughs> Aside from fuel cards, there are charge accounts that you want to get. A lot of people don't know this, but you can get tire accounts. Um, you can get maintenance accounts at uh, truck sales and repair companies. You can get uh, accounts at Staples. Um Home Depot, uh, what else you got? Lowe's, uh, Apple, Amazon, anything that you can think of about trucks, um, you can get a charge account for, and this will help build your business credit. And if you're not in a position to get business credit, it'll certainly help your personal credit because you will be used as a personal guarantor. But one of the main things is a tire account. Uh, a, a repair account and a tools account at a uh, a tool shop because these are things that you'll be purchasing all throughout your career. So it's good to have charge accounts with these places. Sometimes you may have a repair that's too large for your pockets and it'll be beneficial for you to be in a position to have a maintenance account where you can charge it to the game, get back to work, and pay it off as you start working. 15. Work 21 days local. Once your authority is active because you've, you've uh, insured your company, your MC is not fully active for 21 days. 21 business days, mind you. Holiday is excluded. Now, your DOT number is active immediately. That allows you to run within your state lines. Your DOT, excuse me, your MC number, your motor carrier number, takes 21 business days, holidays excluded, in order to be fully active. Um, so be prepared for this. When I first started, I knew nothing about this 21 days. I got everything set up. I thought I was about to rock and roll. I was boss to the wire, every dollar in. And um, then I got hit with a 21 day. And there was a holiday in there, Columbus Day. So this uh, is rough. It's five business days. So... You can say a month. Um, if you don't prepare for this correctly, you can be starting off a month behind. Uh, I ran 21 days local. I did a little $500, $700 loads, which was good because it allowed me to learn how to do the paperwork, the carrier package, how to book loads, and so on and so forth without the uh, the complications of doing such big loads. I was doing small loads and I was staying local, so I had a lot of time to sit and get used to doing paperwork. And at the time, I was using a mobile printer. So I learned how to book loads, do my paperwork and all that stuff within this 21 days while I was working local, which was a blessing. And once my 21 days was up, I took a $6,000 load. I got a 40% cash advance that put some money in my pocket, got me some fuel. And the rest is history. Um, save $10,000 repair fund. Most repairs will be under $10,000. Every five, seven, or 10 years, depending on how you take care of your truck, you'll have a major repair such as an engine. Normally, an engine gets a million miles out of it. You can get a million point two if you're taking care of it without having to do an overhaul or end frame or swapping engines. But... Just as a rule of thumb, somewhere around 750,000 miles, you can get uh, prepared to do an overhaul or an end frame or even swap the engine out. Uh, if you've already had an overhaul or an end frame or some type of engine work, you may get five to seven years out of it. But besides that, $10,000 will get you out of most jams. And also, like I said earlier, uh, if you purchase your truck correctly, your major repairs will be covered, such as your engine, transmission, rears, and your DEF systems, if you have one. I hope you do not. Um, also, depending on how your warranty is, once you get about 750,000 miles, your warranty for your engine may be up. When you, If you get in a brand new truck, the standard manufacturer's warranty is either five years, 500,000, or four years, 400,000. 
some people extend the warranty at purchase um if you did it correctly or if you was fortunate enough to be to purchase a used truck from someone who did so so you're going to want to save $10,000 for your repair fund. It doesn't have to be cash. If you got access to credit, that's just as good when you're talking about repairs. And some of this can be ate up in your fuel cards from your factoring companies or from the truck stops because, <coughs> excuse me, they have maintenance funds. Some of these fuel cards are dual cards. Or sometimes, depending on how much you're factoring, uh, your factoring company will give you a loan depending on uh, the terms and agreements of that particular factory company. Run one full year. You do not know how much money you are going to make uh, until you've seen a full year. couple of things. When you buy a new truck, not necessarily saying brand new, but a new one, a new to you, whether it's brand new, used, whatever. Owning a truck is like getting into a relationship. You have to learn the truck. The truck has to learn you. It normally takes about six months to start working the kinks out. Um, there's going to be little nuances you'll learn about your truck. Uh, give yourself a full year so not only you'll learn the vehicle, but also so you'll get a taste of the freight flow for all seasons of the year. Everything has markets. Real estate has a buyer's market and a seller's market. Stocks has a bull and a bear market. Freight has markets. Generally, between mid-December to the end of February, mid-March is the slow season, generally, all across the board. But I break down uh, reefers, drive-in, and flats when I do my individual video for each one of these steps. This is just a, a overview of what's coming for the seminar. Your filings. There's certain filings that you have to file every single year and there's one that you have to do biannually and if you give me one second i'll tell you so your biannual which is done every two years is an update of your contact information such as your address your mailing address uh your telephone numbers emails and the reason you have to do this is because if for some reason dot the fmcsa or a company has to contact you for whatever reason you have to have updated contact information uh available uh maybe you got a ticket in a different state or whatever the case is you have to have updated accurate contact information and you update that every two years that's called a biannual update then you have your boc3 this is your process of aging uh when you first read that you may think that you have to hire an agent of some sort. You can be the agent. Uh, your BOC3, your process of agent, is nothing more than somebody who has the authority to receive uh, paperwork and updates and information on your company. You can assign yourself as a process of agent. So don't get uh, overwhelmed when you hear process of agent. You can be your own process of agent. Then you got your UCR, your Unified Carrier Registration. All right, then you got your IRP, which is your portion plates. Then you have your IFTA, your International Fuel Tax Agreement. Then you have your state business filings, which can vary depending on which states you're in. But there's uh, fees that you have to pay to have your business in good standing uh, yearly. Uh, then, of course, you have your income taxes, which you pay yearly or quarterly, depending on how you do it. So you want to stay up with your paperwork and filings, your yearly, excuse me, quarterly, yearly, and biannual filing, because this can put your business in a uh, bad standing. Or it can actually uh, shut your business down if you got something that's too out of whack. DOT inspections. You are supposed to get a DOT inspection every year or according to Maryland, every season or 2,500, excuse me, 25,000 miles, whichever comes first. You want to get DOT inspections, not on the side of the road. That's not what I'm talking about, getting pulled over by the police. 
I'm talking about when you take your truck to a truck stop or a mechanic shop to get your vehicle inspected voluntarily. The reason why you want to do this often is because mechanics have an eye that you don't have. And coming from a, a road rebel, a true renegade, you don't want to get a DOT inspection on the side of the road by a police and be out of order. Trust me, my insurance is very high. I've been doing my own thing for a long time, uh, operating by my own rules, which does not override uh, the rules of the system. And I paid the consequences for them. So I'm telling you, you should at least get a DOT inspection every season, every 90 days. If you really, really want to be on top of your P's and Q's, go every 30 or 60 days. It only costs about $100 to get your truck and trailer inspected. But this will save you thousands. Why? Because small issues turn into big issues when they're neglected. And mechanics have an eye that uh, drivers don't have, just like a doctor has or a dentist has an eye that a, a regular human being doesn't have because of their specialty and they can uh, alert you of things that you have to fix early also uh, they can fix a minor things uh, that could give you a violation or put you out of service when you're getting pulled over a hundred dollars could save you thousands of dollars on your insurance costs but I'll go more into that when I do my individual videos for each step audits within your first year of being open you are going to have an audit. This first audit is educational. They are going to pull you in, check out all your files. Some of the things that you're going to need for your audit is a list of vehicles, registration for all trucks and trailers, picture of tags, VIN numbers, and pictures of equipment, your maintenance files, your annual inspections, copy of roadside inspections, list of drivers, driver's qualifications files, which consist of your applications, medical card, and CDL and driving record for each driver. You're going to need copy of your logs, uh, your driver logs, for, uh, hours of operation, or hours of service rather, for the last 30 days, but you're supposed to keep your logs for the last six months in case you trigger an audit and you get a more in-depth audit. But your first audit is for educational purposes only. You're going to need a copy of your gross income. You're going to need a copy of your insurance and you're going to have to be in a drug program where you get random drug tests. Also, you're going to need an application on all drivers, including yourself, showing a 10-year history. If you've kept up with all of this stuff, you've kept up with your DOT inspections that you initiated, if you kept up with your paperwork and filings, um, if you got your tags, your heavy highway use tax, your IFTA, your factoring company should give you a summary of your income, uh, <coughs> and you've been in line with all this stuff, your audit should go very smooth. There's nothing to panic about. So once you have gotten your CDL, set up your legal structure, got your EIN number, filed for your operating authority, got on the load board, bought a truck and trailer, activated your insurance, got a vehicle state inspection, got your tags, which are your portion plates, paid your 2290, which is your heavy highway use tax, got your IFTA account set up, and got your IFTA stickers, which are free. You don't pay for those until you start running. Uh, you signed up with a factoring company, you got your fuel cards in place, you set up charge accounts so you don't have to come out of pocket for everything. You work 21 days local, which will allow you to go out of state lines when you're fully active after 21 days. You've saved $10,000 for a repair fund so you don't get in any jams that you can't get out of. You ran a full year so you can know your truck uh, as well as the business of running the truck and have a full picture of uh, all four seasons of freight cycles. Each season is different. 
You've been on top of your paperwork and your filings, your quarterly, your yearly, and your biannual filings. You've been on top of your DOT inspections, so your vehicle is intact and your safety score is not out of whack and you're not getting put out of service every time you turn around. You've had your audit or, you're rep or you've prepared for your audit. After all that's done, now it's time to enjoy. All right, you did everything right. All right, you've been responsible. You saved up some money to get up yourself out of jam. You've been making thousands of dollars. You work so you can play. Enjoy yourself after you got yourself set up. Not before or not even during. Wait till you get everything in order. Then you can upgrade your life. And last but not least, the golden rule, the unspoken rule, the unnumbered rule. Teach. Once you get all this stuff in order and you got your money coming in and you're enjoying your life, you're shining like a diamond. Don't just come around your friends and drive back around the way with the new whip. You're, you're shining. You got your jewels on. You know, you got your fur, whatever you're doing. Your, your uh, Cartier's, your, your whatever you're into, your gators or whatever. And you're shining. Don't come back around just to show off. Come back around and show a new, improved version of yourself which was always inside of you, but now is manifested into physical reality and not just a thought. That will intrigue individuals to want to become a company driver so they can become an owner operator so they can get their own authority. You teach them so they can replicate all of these steps that I'm teaching y'all so they don't have to figure it out for themselves. Now we go back to the uh, four phases. These are the three levels. Company driver, owner operator, own authority. These are the 21 steps that you take. Plus the unnumbered, unspoken golden rule. In order for you to complete the four phases. Company driver. Get three to six months experience. Owner operator. Drive for no more than one year as an owner operator. So you can save $15,000 in order to get your own operating authority, which will allow you to save a $10,000 repair fund, which will give you the freedom and safety and security to upgrade your life because you've been responsible and you've laid the fa foundation for your business and personal life. So y'all stay tuned till next time. I'll see y'all at the live lecture. I'm going to take a picture of this so you can screenshot it. And also, um, I'll send this out to a text to everyone who has text 85 to my slick text number, which is 855-675-0609. Um, you're going to want to do that because it stores your number every time someone texts that number. And then when I get new information, I can send it out in a mass text. So I don't have to send it to thousands of people individually. We're dealing with over 3,500 people now. I thank and I applaud each and every last one of y'all for reaching out to me. And especially for those that follow through and is going to get in trucks, going to get in CDLs. Because y'all let me know I'm not doing this for nothing. So as always, stay tuned. Until next time, peace.